And the second question, how do you see the sustainability of your tool in the future? As as long as I'm try as I continue to work in this domain, I'll try to make it <laughs> try to make it stay alive. That's not in my control, sadly. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the nice presentation. Uh, next, Garcia uh, Piper for the grow a backbone, introducing. Nomos as a new taxonomic backbone for Western Australia. Do I point it up? Yes. All right, cool. Um, my name is Cassia Piper, um, and myself and my colleagues from the Biodiversity Information Office in Western Australia uh, want to talk to you about uh, Nomos, our taxonomic backbone that we have developed. Um, before I begin, I would... Oh, sorry, I'm a bit short. <laughs> Uh, before I begin, myself and my colleagues would like to acknowledge all Aboriginal people as the traditional owners of the lands and waters throughout Western Australia. In particular, we pay our respects to the Wajuk Noongar people as the traditional owners of the land on which our office is located. And we would also like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today, the Wininina people, and pay our respects to them, their continuous culture and their elders past, present and emerging. So some context, uh, the Biodiversity Information Office or BIO is responsible for making Western Australian biodiversity data more discoverable, accessible and usable. BIO is central to Western Australia's long-term digital strategy for environmental assessment and approvals and supporting high quality, efficient and transparent decision-making with reliable data. BIO is jointly funded by the WA government through the Streamlined WA project and the Commonwealth government through the DAP project. Streamline WA is an innovative whole of sector approach to develop best practice principles for making and applying regulations and will change the way government interacts with private and community sectors. The Digital Environmental Assessment Program is a Commonwealth government project to digitally transform the environmental assessment process to make it quicker and easier by streamlining approvals, integrating systems and reducing duplication to enable better decision making Oh, uh, this program also includes the National Biodiversity Data Repository Platform, which is hosted by the Department of Climate Change, Energy, the Environment and Water. And this will also ingest biodiversity data from all Australian states and territories to support management and conservation decisions. So Danju is the name of the Biodiversity Data Repository for Western Australia. It is the Noongar word for together, as the aim is to work together to bring together biodiversity data from all over Western Australia. Ooh, the circle's already there, okay. Uh, so this is a high level overview of Dandrew's four systems, uh, data submission on the left, uh, data curation and storage in the middle, and data delivery on the right. And early gap analyses showed that taxonomic name management and integration up the top uh, was pivotal to the success of Danju and its curation module. Uh, as we all know, the importance of taxonomy to biodiversity data uh, of particular importance to Bio and Danju included linking records to conservation codes for uh, threatened and listed species, tracks and tracking taxonomic name changes through time, and also describing and explaining any fauna or flora that are part of an environmental impact assessment. This ensures that everyone is using the correct name across different departments and agencies. An additional consideration for the taxonomic backbone of Danju was a drive from environmental regulators to require taxonomic sources to come from WA institutions such as the Western Australian Museum and the Western Australian Herbarium. These requirements are also ingrained in the process for listing threatened species within the threatened species and communities branch. So taxonomic names from other sources that were different to the museum and the herbarium would have created mismatches and therefore would potentially put protected species at risk. So taxonomic names from bio therefore need to come primarily from the WA Museum and the WA Herbarium data feeds with some other sources such as Australian Faunal Directory and Australian Plant Census, likely candidates to capture other names that may not be part of regular feeds. These other sources were needed due to bio's decision to include all records from WA and Danju, whether or not that species was considered native or naturalized to WA. 
So being so important to biodiversity, taxon names have been an essential part of how the department does business for quite some time. So there is already a taxonomic names management system within the department. So WA Census or WA Census was first released in 1990 and its last significant upgrade was in 2004. Uh, it is a legacy Oracle system that is running on infrastructure that is considered end of life. So WA Census is well embedded within de the department. Shown on this diagram are all the internal business areas that have one or more systems that rely directly or indirectly on WA Census. So this is, WA Census is a fantastic resource. It's got a lot of historical name changes, but due to its infrastructure, uh, we were unable to use it as a taxonomic backbone. Uh, additionally, the scope of WA Census uh, predominantly handles plant names, and we obviously needed fauna names as well. Uh, so along with our usual problems of tech stacks and time, uh, we also needed to resolve additional challenges around taxonomy. So the first, there is no complete single source of truth for WA taxonomy. The herbarium could provide very detailed information on plants through our census, but very limited for fauna. And the WA Museum was able to provide a regularly updated checklist for terrestrial vertebrates, but no checklist existed for invertebrates. So we worked with curators from both institutions to discover their preferred sources of truth that they would use to verify records in their specimen databases. Uh, second point, we needed this strong taxonomic backbone as each record provided to Danju is curated not just temporarily and spatially, but also taxonomically. We required a dynamics reference of names from regulatory approved sources that contained regular updates. And these updates would assist in keeping names constant between the museum, the herbarium, and the threatened species and communities branch. And lastly, uh, bio displays every record of every species, even if that species is not considered native or naturalized to Western Australia. The reason behind this was that bio staff don't have that in-depth knowledge to make a certain call about the correct distribution of a species. While some are very obvious, such as the lion and the baboon from the zoo that are in the museum collections, other species from the Northern Territory and South Australia could potentially be considered an aspect of natural species movement. Therefore, bio had a slightly larger than WA scope for taxonomic names, as a record needs to pass a taxonomic name check before it can be displayed and published in Danju. Due to these three big points, bio required a patchwork blanket names management system something that we could use to stitch together names from the museum, the herbarium, and their preferred sources for taxonomic names that are considered non-WA. So as a result of this, NOMOS contains taxonomic data from the WA Museum as our source of, source of truth for fauna names, WA Herbarium as our source of truth for flora, as well as from sources approved by the WA Museum and the Herbarium, including the Australian Faunal Directory, Australian Plant Census, and the World Register of Marine Species. The biggest and arguably most important feature of NOMOS is the ability to relate synonyms of various kinds to their currently accepted names. So this creates a chain of names for a user to click through and explore, and also for Danju to follow it to allow a match allow it to match a non-current name with a current name for data display. So a new system meant that we needed new processes and workflows. So the first hurdle we needed to jump involved getting taxonomic name record deltas from WA Census. As there was no way to link the systems to automate this, it would need to be done manually until this process could be automated through APIs. This process really cemented the way bio team is structured with science officers and data engineers engaging with WA Herbarium and Ecoinformatics Department staff to develop a solution and reduce, duplica uh, reduce duplication of effort. Unique IDs of names from WAS Census were retained in NOMOS in a legacy ID field. Once a week, a full database extract of WAS Census is prepared which allows data engineers from bio to compare WA census IDs against legacy IDs in NOMOS. If this fails, it then performs a second check by a string match to capture any names where the legacy ID field is not populated. Science staff collaborated with the data engineer staff to create a decision workflow to fine tune whether the script should count the record as a Delta record. 
By running this process on a regular basis, we can capture any changes to WAR census records, so NOMOS can be kept abreast of WAR census, and there is no mismatch in information between BIO and the WA herbarium. Another workflow to consider was the flow of information between the herbarium, the museum, and species and communities regarding taxonomic names and conservation codes shown on the current slide. As you can see, this was already a rather messy process with much more duplication of effort than anyone would like. And inserting NOMOS into this was necessary, but it also made it a lot more, even more tricky. Since no systems can be connected at this stage, it relies on staff vigilance and communication between bio, the herbarium, the museum, and species and communities to make sure no protected species records are exposed in Danju. An ideal future solution would see WA census decommissioned and have NOMOS connect directly to the, mu the museum, the herbarium, and species communities data feeds, allowing it to be the conduit between these three important systems and enhancing the flow of both taxonomic names and conservation codes. This solution has less on the vigilance of staff and rather through connectivity of systems through APIs. So BIO has a very long list of improvements we would like to see in NOMOS. Some short-term goals include better handling of hybrid and subgenus names to make sure they are displayed correctly in Danju and are in the correct fields in NOMOS data tables. A big help to our processes and those of the department will be the integration of conservation codes into NOMOS, as this will allow a better solution for the transfer of species names and conservation codes as seen on the previous slide. We also want to improve and refine how NOMOS and Danju interact with each other, allowing for better name updates. Some longer term goals include the decommission of WAR census, integration with other names lists, such as the national species lists, and integration with herbarium and museum collection management systems to hopefully include any type specimen information. Uh, I'd like to finish up by thanking all of our data proponents listed here, the collection and curatorial staff at the WA Museum and WA Herbarium for their assistance and patience regarding taxonomic name questions, Gaia Resources for their assistance in building Danju version one, and the, obviously the conference organizers and committee. Uh, I'd also like to give a special shout out to Dr. Margaret Byrne and Rob Sessioner for their support in getting us here for this presentation, and Helen Ensiket as well. I know she's a co-author, but she wrote a lot of proposal documents. <laughs> Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please reach out to us via email. And if you'd like to know more about Bio or Explore Danju, please follow these QR codes. Yep, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Any questions? No? Wait, I'm running away. <laughs> okay, I think the last presentation for the